I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it's time for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. Right before we jump in, I want to thank our sponsor, the Togo RV app. Download it for free on Apple or Android and use it for RV maintenance reminders and checklists, storing all the data about your RV. They have all kinds of RV ownership information, including a new course from Abby and me on RV buying. If you like the app, you can get a RoadPass Pro membership, which unlocks all kinds of premium features on the Togo RV app. It's $49.99 a year and gives you turn-by-turn -turn RV GPS routing, lots of great discounts on things like tires and lithium batteries, and more. Download the free Togo RV app, and if you decide to upgrade to a RoadPass Pro membership, you can save $10 off with the promo code RVMILES10X. In last week's News from the Parks episode, we shared some explosive visitation numbers from a few of America's top national parks. Well, now the National Park Service's full annual visitation report is out, and surprisingly, system-wide visitation for 2021 was slightly below pre-pandemic levels. But the parks still received just under 300 million recreation visits last year. That reduction could be related to still-in-place visitor limitations at many Park Service facilities, especially smaller historical sites like presidential homes that aren't currently offering tours. There's also the timed entry and reservations at some of the most major national parks. Of the 423 parks in the national park system, just 25 received more than half of the total of visitors. 44 parks set a record for recreation visits in 2021. The National Park Service is recommending that if you're looking to visit a major national park in 2022, you might consider combining your trip with smaller, less visited sites in the area. With more and more visitors, public land managers are trying to find ways to cope. In Arizona's Coconino National Forest, the Forest Service is severely limiting where camping can happen in the Sedona area with what they call emergency closures. Beginning in late March or early April, there will be only eight designated dispersed camping areas in the entire forest with around 200 spots total. The rest of the forest will be completely closed off to public camping. Coconino's rangers are also finding new ways to enforce the 14-day limit on dispersed camping stays. According to Red Rock News, rangers now have an app to track the license plates of campers. In the past, they used handwritten notes and a whiteboard, and often campers would just move to a different part of the national forest every two weeks. Well, now rangers can track the info on their phones along with other local law enforcement and pull up a database before asking campers to leave. After staying in the forest for 14 days, campers cannot return until 16 days later. While boondocking opportunities seem to be reducing in places like Arizona and Colorado, there is some good news on the private campground front. The National Association of RV Parks and Campgrounds estimates that 81,000 new campsites will be built in 2022, according to a report in Woodall's Campground Magazine. That's up over about 54,000 that were supposed to be created in 2021. And the report also says that 58% of park owners had an increase in main season occupancy in 2021, and 55% have unfortunately increased their rates. As much as investment firms and large corporations seem to be buying up campgrounds, 71% of parks report that they are still independently owned small businesses. North America's largest campground franchise, KOA, has added new functionality to their website to make it easier to book multiple stays. The site's shopping cart now allows you to make multiple reservations at one campground or across many campgrounds in the KOA system in a single transaction, making it easier to book faster across KOA locations. As campers begin planning and booking for a new year of travel, the majority are reserving three to five months out, according to KOA's latest research. KOA's advanced reservations are already up 51% over last year. KOA also shared some news about the ever-increasing diversity in camping. In 2021, 8 million black households camped. Back in 2017, that number was only 3.1 million, an increase of 158% over the last five years. KOA's Black Community Camping Snapshot shows that 61% of black campers prefer tent camping over other lodging options. 46% take more than three camping trips a year, 
and one third of black campers plan to purchase an RV in 2022. 72% of black campers are either millennial or Gen Z. We reported recently that the RV industry built 600,000 units in 2021, a staggering record. But how many of those units were actually sold? Well, according to statistical surveys who tally actual registrations of vehicles, 567,079 RVs were sold last year, meaning that only about 6% of those 600,000 units went unsold, restocking dealer lots. But there's actually a lot of signs that sales are on the decline. If you look at monthly registrations, each of the last seven months of 2021 saw a reduction in sales over 2020, mostly in the double digits. A lot of that probably has to do with late 2020 being the beginning of the boom in RV sales. But another interesting tidbit I found was that motorhomes are gaining ground again. Trailers are the vast majority of RVs made and sold, around 90%, and they've been gaining more and more market share for the last several years. But last year, motorhomes pushed back a bit, beating the downward trend. Led by Class B camper vans, which were the only segment of RVs to have a year-over-year -year sales increase in December. Finally, with fuel prices continuing to rise, you might be on the lookout for the best way to save a few cents on a gallon of gasoline or diesel. Fuel savings app GasBuddy has analyzed all its listed pricing data for 2021 and came up with the best days of the week to buy fuel. Gas Buddy says that Mondays offer the lowest average gas prices in the majority of the U.S. Monday was also the best day to buy gas on Gas Buddy's 2017, 2018, and 2019 studies. But contrary to previous years, Friday was also one of the cheapest days of the week. The worst day to buy fuel was Thursday. And while the weekend previously held the title for the most expensive prices, Wednesday now follows Thursday as the second most expensive day to fill up. Gas Buddy attributes the changes to changes in work from home lifestyles. Gas Buddy also breaks down the results by state, which can vary dramatically. We'll link to the full findings in the description. They say that drivers that shop around save $250 per year on average, and obviously heavy fuel guzzlers like RVs and trucks will save a bit more. The nationwide average for a gallon of regular gasoline was $352 on Friday, with diesel clocking in at $394. Tensions between Russia and Ukraine have caused the price of a barrel of oil to surge above $91, according to AAA. And Gas Buddy anticipates that gasoline could hit $4 per gallon in the coming months. That's it for this week's news. Let us know your thoughts and opinions by leaving a comment below and please hit the subscribe button for more videos like these. And remember, likes are free and they help our YouTube algorithm a lot. Here's last week's news video if you missed it and here's a great video that you haven't checked out yet. We'll see you next time.